My name is uh, Mr. Oluyinka Padonu, and I'll be your uh, presenter for this course, which is Advanced Communication and Media Ethics for 400 level. And for the next uh, 40 minutes, we are going to be having a discussion uh, in this uh, direction. Uh, in this regard, I would like us to start with um, reminding ourselves about what uh, communication is all about. I'm very sure that in all your previous classes, we have discussed about what communication is all about. But it's not out of the way to still uh, remind us because it's very, very relevant uh, at this time. Remember, you are in uh, the foreign level, and so you should be abreast about what uh, communication is all about. So we'll start. Now, what is communication? Communication, as you all know, is the act of uh, conveying meaning from one entity or group to another through the use of mutually understood signs and symbols. Remember that there are several definitions of what communication is all about. We can also look at it from uh, this perspective, that communication is simply the act of transferring or exchange of information from one person or group to another, the act of exchange of information or transferring information from one person to another. Now, what we are doing currently, right now, since Monday, when classes have started, is simply communication. So there's a communication activity between the lecturer and the students from everywhere in Nigeria where you are connecting to. So communication is the act of exchange of information, exchange of a message from one person or group to another. Now what you and I are doing currently is exchange of information from, that has to do with the group. Now it is a closed group. It is not open to the public. We are within a closed group, and so we are exchanging information. There's a message that is being passed from the lecturer to the student. Now, in other words, for communication to take place, we have always discussed that communication does not take place in isolation. There's always somebody who initiates communication. Somebody initiates a message. And the, the person who initiates a message in this regard, as you have been taught before, is the sender. So the sender initiates a message. Remember the, the communication process, communication process, where there's what we call the sender, or you have the encoder you have the sender of the message the initiator of the message otherwise also known as the encoder now it sends the message or what we refer to as information or what we refer to as what we refer to as the content so there's always a content there's always a message and so the message moves through a channel or what we refer to as the medium so there's a medium, there's a medium that takes the, the sender's message to the receiver. So from our communication process, we have the sender, you have the message which is content, now it goes through a medium, which is the channel through which you are listening to me. So right now, our medium of communication is the internet. So the internet, has come to stay, so it's a medium. You have other medium or you have other channels such as the radio, we have the television, but currently, because of this lockdown, 
the state government, the federal government are leveraging the electronic media as a medium of education to secondary schools, to primary schools. I mean, um, yeah, 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 I mean, very soon, uh, students are going to be writing WAEC, but because of this lockdown, even WAEC itself has created a medium or a, me a means through which it is reaching and preparing students who want to write WAEC in the year to uh, this year. So, like I said, you and I are we are communicating right now through the medium of the internet, and it's a close close group communication. Now, from the channel, you have what we call the noise. We have always discovered about the noise. Now, everything that has to do, that serves as an obstruction to this presentation is referred to as the noise. Some of you are, at times experience um, what we call internet and connectivity. There's network problem. Some of you, it's your phone. Your phone is not connected. Maybe your phone is bad. And so you are not able to hear what the lecturer or the presenter is saying. So when that happens, we refer to it as a noise. So noise is anything that obstructs the flow of information, the flow of the message or the content that a sender has sent. Now, in a case where there is no obstruction, where there's no noise, then you have what we call the receiver. So the receiver, you are the one receiving my message at this point in time. So I have initiated a conversation we are discussing on what communication is all about. So I've initiated a message, I've started my presentation to you, and you are there listening to me, receiving what I am sharing with you. Now, at the end of the day, in the communication process, after the receiver, you now get what, what we refer to as the feedback. It's get at the feedback, the feedback. So the feedback is, to prove to the sender that the message has been received. And a receiver is also referred to as the decoder. So a message has been encoded by the sender and then the receiver decodes it. So it's either you call him, uh, you either you call him the receiver or you call him the decoder. So it decodes the message and then it sends a feedback to the sender. So the process continues like that. So in a nutshell, that's what communication is all about. So communication does not happen in isolation. It's a process which we have simply explained. Now let's move on. Um, the next one is effective communication effective communication. What is effective communication? There's a difference between communication and effective communication. So the key word there is the word effective. You can communicate and yet your communication is not effective. I can say something and then it is not effective. Now what do we mean by effective communication? Now effective communication is the act of communicating in such a way that the intending meaning of the message by the sender is understood by the receiver. I'll come again with that. Effective communication is the act of communicating in such a way that the intended meaning so of the message by the sender, the intended meaning of the message by the sender is understood by the receiver. Now, what am I saying here? Very simple. I said earlier on when I was describing the communication process that for a receiver to be able to send a feedback, he must have understood the intended meaning of the message by the or by the by the sender for him or her to be able to send a feedback so the ability of a receiver to understand to be on the same page with the sender 
is what we refer to as effective communication. So you and I will be on the same page in this presentation only if I am able to communicate to you effectively. If my presentation is well understood, at least by majority of those listening to me, then I have communicated effectively. I have communicated effectively. And one of the things that effective communication helps us to achieve is that it can help to foster good working relationship, good relationship. Now, if I am talking and I don't understand you, there's no way the two of us can flow. The same thing too in our homes, especially for our mothers and our fathers, couples. There must be what we call effective marital communication. Now, most of the quarrels, most of the challenges that husband and, her, and wife have is because they've not really understood themselves. So, their, 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 their communication skill has not been enhanced. Now, if they both are able to enhance their communication skill, you discover that communication will become effective. So the husband understands what the wife is saying, and the wife also understands what the husband is saying. The same thing too in uh, a working environment. A working environment. The only way the I mean members of an organization can really work together is when communication is effective. When there's good line of communication, and everybody understands when the boss. When the head of the department says this, when he says go to the left, everybody understands go to the left. But a situation where the, the head of a unit is saying go left and everybody is going right, simply because they don't understand, then there is a disconnect. So effective communication is all about understanding the intended meaning of a message by the sender. Now, here are some characteristics of effective communication. We have some characteristics of effective communication. One, there must be a clear message. When we say clear message, it means the message must be simple, easy to be understood, or easy to understand. So when a sender is sending a message, the message must be clear. So number one, characteristics of an effective communication is that there must be a clear message. Now, number two, the message must be correct. The message must be correct. The message must be correct. So the sender must send a correct message. One would be a correct message. It, it, it must not, the message must not have what we call double meaning. The message must not be vague. It must, it must not be ambiguous. The sender must not go beyond the reasoning ability of the sender otherwise the message will not be correct so the message the, the sender must convey a message that does not have a double interpretation as i am communicating with everyone listening to me now my message must be correct so that you don't have a double interpretation to what I'm saying. So there must be correct message. Another characteristic of effective communication is that the message must be complete. Communication is the basis for decision. Communication is the basis for decision. Now, what do I mean by that? We all listen to the news. We've been following the trend about uh, coronavirus, COVID-19. Now, we, some of us listen, get information from the internet. Some of us get information from TV. Some of us get information from radio. Now, imagine a situation where somebody is sharing a message on the signs of how to detect, sharing information on how to detect somebody who has contacted coronavirus. There are some checklist there are some points there are some certain signs that somebody who has it who has contacted it there are some signs they will exhibit now imagine somebody 
on radio, on TV, making such a presentation, and it gets to a point where it doesn't talk again. And you are there listening, hoping to get every detail of how to identify a victim, how to, how to identify the signs of somebody who has it. Now, when such a, uh, so such a presenter stops halfway, you discover that he has sent and then goes off air. Such a person has sent an incomplete message. And now you cannot make an informed decision. Or for example, we're looking at uh, the issue of, okay, sit, I mean, the government gave a directive that we should all sit down at home. And then there are days, there are days when we need to go out, or there are, I mean, there's been a time in some, in some states, they have given them days when they should go out where they need to carry out one activity or the other. In a case where an information that has been passed and the message was not given completely, you discover that you put the receiver into a state of confusion or a state where he or she is not able to make an informed decision. Now they tell us that we need to go out between 10 and two to back to the market market those who are selling the market should open their shops also around that time now a situation where the message being shared or being passed is not complete it stopped halfway then you you discover that it affects the decision of the receiver he's not able to make a very sound decision simply because the person who initiated the message did not give a complete message. So one of the characteristics of effective communication is complete message. I was listening to you know the news on channel. I was listening to the news on when, uh, yesterday, and you know so what I was just saying, you know, I mean what I was, what I'm going to explain to you now. Something like that happened. A lady was actually caught, and uh, she went out to the market. When she was not supposed to be caught, and the members of the, I think, security agency, they caught up with her, and they were asking her why she was out, and she began to explain that she assumed or she thought that this and this is what they said about the timing. Now that is a very, very good example of what we're talking about. She hasn't gotten a complete information about the timing, the schedule of when people are actually supposed to go out. Now that affected the decision she took. So. This, I, 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 that affect, affected the decision she actually took. So when you share an inform uh, an incomplete message, it affects the your decision. So those who are uh, those who are those who are information, those who are involved in the sending of information, those who are in the journalism profession, like you and I are in, we must ensure that when we are sending out information to the people we must ensure that we send a complete message because people make informed decision based on what we are sending outside to them and that's why we continue to have challenges with with social media which is what we call the citizens media because people are sending out incomplete message people are sending out fake information and if you are the type you are not very careful you are hasty in taking decision you run with such information, then you, you 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 find yourself to pay the price. You find yourself to you find yourself you know falling at the as a victim and the wrong side of the law. So it's very important that before you take any action at all, make sure that the message you are getting is a complete one. You get information from the right source because that informs your decision. Now the next characteristic is. Your message must be precise. One of the characteristics of effective communication is that the message must be precise. What do we mean by precise? That is, in other words, it must be easy to interpret. You don't put too many things together. You don't put too many, it must be concise. It must be short. The shorter, the better. That's what I've always learned, that the shorter, the better. You don't have to put too many things together to pass your message across. And that's why you are, I mean, it's very important to, to always check what you are sending out before you send them out. 
because if you put too many information, you confuse your receiver. So one of the characteristics of effective communication is that the message must be precise. Another point is reliability. Your message must have an element of truth in it. There must not be falsehood. People more your, your receiver must be able to rely on what you are sending. So reliability is one of the effect I mean, types of effective communication. What you must be sending out as a media person, as somebody who is trained in act of communication, is that your message must be reliable. So reliability of message is very important. And so you have some newspapers as part of their mantra, they'll tell you that uh, conscience that is nurtured by truth. They'll tell you they stand for the truth. So that is what the value they are running with. So one of the of effective communication is that there must be reliability of the message. Uh, point six is a consideration of the recipient. Consideration of the recipient or the receive or the receiver of the message consideration of the recipient what we brought in by consideration of the recipient are uh, all the medium through which you are sending what we talk about consideration of the recipient what we simply mean is that whoever is sending the message the sender must be considerate of the receiver it must be considerate of the receiver you must understand the language in which your receiver is, I mean, you must understand it's like it's our language. You must understand the level of knowledge. So you don't just throw information out there. You must under, uh, know that oh, the people you are I'm actually communicating to or communicating with, they understand, uh, they understand my language. So we must be on the same page. I can't be doing this presentation in Yoruba, and then you that are out there listening to me, your language of communication is English. So you can see that there's a disconnect. So I must be considerate of the language. I must be considerate of the level of knowledge of my receiver. Otherwise, I am not communicating at all. So consideration of the recipient is one of the characteristics of effective communication. And then the last but not the least is uh, what we call the sender's courtesy. The sender's courtesy. The sender's courtesy. 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 C O U R T E S Y. Now, what do I mean by the sender's courtesy as one of the characteristics of effective communication? In other words, I must respect my receiver, I must give due regard. And if you watch those who are on television, presenters on television, presenters on radio, you discover that you discover a sense of courtesy in their presentation. They discover a sense of courtesy in their presentation. They don't talk anyhow. They don't they don't talk to they don't talk to the receiver. They talk with the receiver. And when they are starting their program, they introduce themselves. They are mindful that there's some there's a receiver who is watching or who is listening. And then they know how they you know communicate with them. So you, there's a difference between you talk with and you talk to. So you talk with your audience, you don't talk to your audience. So that's what we mean by there must be what we call the sender's courtesy. So whoever is initiating a message must have a form of courtesy in sending information to the uh, receiver. So that's what you can take concerning that. So we were looking at seven points under uh, characteristics of effective communication. Now let's move to another aspect of this course, which is uh, the media of communication, the media of communication, the media of communication. Remember, we're still looking at uh, the, 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 the course is advanced communication and media ethics. 
So we're looking at the media of communication. Now, in our other previous courses, we have actually looked at um, the various forms of uh, media through which we communicate to people as men and women who are practicing you know, journalism. We have our means of reaching to our audience. We have our means of reaching to our audience. So it's very important for us to also bring that into for, you know, in this course. Now, when we talk about media, we're talking about the vehicle of reaching our audience. We deal with the mass audience. We deal with a mass audience. When we talk about mass audience, remember we're talking about a large heterogeneous audience. A large heterogeneous audience. So if you're going to reach a mass audience, you must have the means to which you reach them. So the media has to do with the vehicle of reaching your mass audience. Now, the first one is the, uh, the print media. So you can reach a mass audience through the print media. We've talked that at various times where we have met. And for those of us who are listening outside of uh, the legal centers, I want to believe that your mass com lecturers have also you know, put you through on what the media is all about, the various types of media. So we have the print media, and we'll talk about the print media. So you can reach a large audience through the print media, such as uh, books, magazines, journals, and what have you. So that is for the print media. The newspaper is also, the newspaper is there. So you have newspaper, you have books, you have uh, magazines, you have journals, and what have you. And that's for the print media. Now, the other one is uh, the electronic media which we can break down into television and radio. The electronic media, otherwise known as the broadcast media. Television, which is audio and visual. And then you have the radio, which is just the audio. So that is for the electronic media, so which is the TV, and which is the radio. So that is also one of the vehicles in which you reach a mass audience. We're looking at media of communication now. Now the other one is the online media. Online media, you and I are able to communicate right now via the online media. Like I said earlier on, there are other people who are doing this same kind of presentation, you know, using the television and the radio. I said that um, the legal state government and other state government too are reaching their students who are right now sitting down at home through the radio and through the television. So we are doing ours right now via the internet. So the online media has come to stay and then all across, I mean, all across nations, because due to the current, you know, pandemic lockdown, millions of people are reaching mass audience through, you know, the power of the online media. And as you all know, that that even the traditional media, which I just mentioned, the the TV and the radio, have also leveraged on the online media to also reach millions of people because thing, I mean, technology has come to stay and technology is changing the way we communicate. Technology is changing the way we receive message. Technology is changing the way in which we are sending messages today. Now, who will ever think that a few months, whoever think that in January, I mean, that whoever think when we just said Happy New Year to ourselves this year, that by April, that you and I will be receiving lectures via the online media. But you can see that there's a disruption in the regular way in which we communicate. And so we don't have any choice than to flow with the trend of things. 
So the online media has come to stay as a vehicle to reach a large heterogeneous audience. So thanks to our technology. Now you also have what we call the advertising media. Advertising media, you can read more about that. You have the out of home, you go outside, you see billboards, you see vehicles, you see buses, you know, you see them. So that falls under the what the advertising media. Then you also have films too, movies too. So the film industry is also a media through which we reach so many people. Then you also have what we call the uh, mobile media. The mobile media too has come to stay. Now the mobile media is also leveraging the online media or the internet to also reach a large heterogeneous audience. Now, if you are not connected via the internet, then you can always use your mobile to reach people. You can use your mobile to reach people. You have people send SMS, bulk SMS to millions of people. So the, the media, the, the, mob, the mobile media is a mix of various functions. It's a mix of various functions. So right now, you and I are able to reach us. We are able to communicate. Some of you are using the uh, your laptop to, 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 to get connected to the lecture this morning, while some are using their mobile phones to get connected to this presentation this morning. So all of this falls under the mobile, the mobile media. So the mobile media has also come to stay. They all shape uh, the society at large. They influence our behavior, they influence our attitude. So these are just, uh, in a nutshell, the media of communication that we use to reach out to people. So I'll quickly run through that again. You have the electronic, you have the print media, you have the electronic media, you have the online media, you have under the online media, that's when you now have maybe the social media, which is just a sub of the online media, because the social media cannot exist without the online itself. So we have the advertising media, you have the thin media, you have the mobile media. So like I said, I said they all shape our they've shaped society, they've shaped the way we communicate, they shaped the they've influenced our behavior, they have influenced our attitude today. So I hope uh, you are all getting something down, written down. So we want to move quickly to another aspect of this uh, class, which is, um, I want us to look at the Nigerian Communications Commission. Commission. Hello, someone wants to ask a question. I do not want them. Hello. I want to look at the Nigerian Communications Commission as another aspect of this uh, class, the Nigerian Communication Commission, NCC. Now, the Nigerian Communication Commission is an independent regulatory authority for the telecommunication industry in Nigeria. The Nigerian Communications Commission it is the independent regulatory authority for the telecommunication industry in Nigeria. It was established on November 24, 1992. November 24, 1992. It was a decree that established the Nigerian Communications Commission. Now, what is the objective? Now, before I go into the objective, and then this, um, the decree that established the Nigerian Communications Commission was uh, abrogated. That is, it has been replaced. 
he got replaced that was uh, in uh, 2003 so it has now is now currently referred to as the nigeria nigerian communication act nca nigerian communication act nca nigerian communication act of 2003 nigerian communication act of 2003 now currently the nigerian communications commission is headed by uh, professor umar dambata professor umar dambata so that is the current chief executive officer of uh, nigerian communications commission now what is the objective of the nigerian communications commission nigerian communication commission is responsible for regulating the supply of telecommunication services and facilities promoting competition i'll take it again the nigerian communications commission is responsible for regulating the supply of telecommunication services and facilities in nigeria they regulate the supply of everything that has to do with telecommunication services and facilities i will look around in the environment you see various masts you see various masts across the nation you know of all of the telecommunication services that we have in nigeria so they are being regulated by the nigerian communication commission now they are also responsible for promoting competition healthy competition among the service providers they are responsible for promoting healthy competition among the service uh, providers i know that when there is competition it has a lot of advantages it uh, gives room for the user the end users like yourself and myself the consumers uh, to be able to take a decision to decide which one we prefer one service provider you know if allowed can actually hold everybody to ransom back in the days of uh, nitel nitel was the sole provider of telecommunication services those days and nitel you will queue for hours you will you know have to physically get to their offices before and it takes months before you can have access to be able to communicate both locally and internationally so it got to a level where the uh, nitel nigerian telecommunication those days it got to a time where everybody became tired of their services and everybody was praying that mobile telecommunication will come into nigeria and today you and i are uh, enjoying uh, communication both locally and internationally today because of because the government opened up the industry to allow private participation and so promoting healthy competition is one of the objectives of uh, of why we have nigerian communications commission uh, the nigerian communication commission ncc also is responsible for setting performance standards for telecommunication services in nigeria they ensure that the standards are there they ensure that that that, that the operation of telecommunication provider meets up with industry standard or global standards. They cannot operate, they cannot even get licenses if they are not able to prove that they have what it takes to give, I mean, to, to, to play effectively according to global standards. So Nigerian telecommunication exists to ensure that the standards are set in line with global best practices in line with global best practices so this is very very important so you can you know uh, go to the nigerian communications commission website to get more information about their their objective now i want us to quickly look at the telecom sector and how it helps the national economy and how it helps our national economy. Now, I have those, uh, I have about three points here 
Now, it's a major, the Nigerian telecom, the telecom sector, it's a major contributor to the nation's economy, economic growth and development. The telecom sector is a major contributor to the nation's economic growth and development. Now, you can imagine a nation where the people are not able to uh, properly you know, communicate, where, there's, where telecommunication is not in place. It sets that, um, that community, that nation, it sets them backward. It sets them backward. So telecom the telecommunication sector of any nation cannot be wished away. It cannot be wished away. Why? Because they play a major role in contributing to that, I mean, to that, to nation's economic growth and development. It plays a major role. It's a contributor to the nation's economic growth and development. Now, 11.39%, they contribute 11.39% to Nigeria's GDP, gross domestic product. As of now, the telecom sector contributes 11.9% to Nigerian gross domestic product, GDP. Did you get that? The through the NCC regulation, internet users have risen to 122.6 million. Internet users in Nigeria is estimated at over 122.6 million. 122.6 million in Nigeria. Now, like I said earlier on in the first point, there is a major contributor to nation's economic growth. Now, you will discover that uh, as a result of the telecoms industry and its effect on internet, you discover that it has opened the nation to play in the e-commerce sector globally. The likes of Jumia, the likes of Konga, uh, which other one is, again do we know? There are so many, there are so many e-commerce websites that uh, that are enjoying, you know, they are enjoying the telecom sector today and are contributing to the growth and development of our economy as a result of the telecom sector. Also, educationally too, as a result of this uh, lockdown. People are beginning to leverage the internet to do business. People are beginning to leverage the internet to, I mean, to educate. Look at what JPTS is doing today. JPTS is able to reach every student in all the centers across Nigeria today as a result of the internet. So, and this also part of the telecom you know, sector. They work hand in hand. So, it has contributed. So we said we have about 122.6 million internet users, over 122.6 million internet users, you know, in Nigeria today. So it is the telecom sector has so much influence on national economy. Now we also have an active telephone user. We have about 175 million active telephone users in Nigeria. One, over 175 million active telephone users in Nigeria today. So the telecom sector is contributing so much to national economy, contributing so much to national economy. Now, uh, in view of this, I want us to uh, take this assignment, take this assignment, remember it's a 40 minutes class, take this assignment. I want us to, against the next class, we're going to submit the challenges, right now, the challenges of NCC, that is Nigerian Communication Commission, in managing the telecom, in managing the communications industry in Nigeria. I want us to list the challenges of NCC in managing the communication industry in Nigeria. The challenges of NCC in managing the communication industry in Nigeria. That's the assignment. And I want the assignment 
you know, to be sent to uh, my to my email to my email. My, I have an email. So the email you will send the assignment to is Mr. Padunu online class at gmail.com. Mr. Padunu online class at gmail.com. I'll take the assignment again. Write out the challenges of NCC in managing the communication industry in Nigeria. There are so many challenges facing the industry. So just do a research on it and then write out the challenges of NCC managing communication industry in Nigeria and send to my email, Mr. Padunu online class at gmail.com. Mr. Padunu online class at gmail.com. Okay, then second also at the second one is how has the internet, how has it contributed to the growth? How has the internet contributed to the growth of education in Nigeria? How has the internet contributed to the growth of education and e-commerce? Education and e-commerce in Nigeria. So those are the two assignments I want you to write and send to my email, Mr. Padunu online class at gmail.com. Mr. Padunu online class at gmail.com. Uh, I don't know if we still have time. I wanted us to actually look at the look at the Nigerian Communication Act, the Nigerian Communication Act 2003. I'm not too sure if I still have time for us to look at that because it's already uh, 7.40. Like I said, it's a 40 minutes class. So, but maybe we'll take it up from there by the time we meet again. You can still, you can go ahead and read much, uh, read further about the act, Nigerian Communication Act 2003, that was signed into law by ex-president chief Olusha Gumbasa on Jordan in 2003. Remember I said the first one was a what came into being as a decree that was in that was in 1992 but it was uh, abrogated and now replaced by the national communication act of 2003 so please go and uh, research further on this uh, act and let's see how it affects us today so this is uh, the much we can take for this first class and i hope we all uh, enjoyed the session. I don't know if you can take one question, if time permits us, take one or two questions. Okay. So if there are no, there are no questions, I'll see you by the next class. Thank you. Enjoy your day.